It's for you to see some of the recorded broadcasts we have made. When you watch them, I'd like you to realize that these are plays, all fictional. We haven't dubbed in a translation of the soundtracks, although since these were recorded, we've developed an automatic translator. You'll see that later. All right, I think we're ready for the showing. If somebody will please dim the house lights... Of course, I'd seen the films before, but I stayed at the back of the hall to watch them again. The almost human forms, half dancing, the colors bright but strange. The sound was a flowing language with many shifts of pitch, and there was that strange, odd motion, not slow, but somehow drifting. It had been bothering me for some time, the films. There was something in the way they walked. They were good actors. Even without knowing what was happening, you were interested. You could tell the hero from the villain sometimes, and you rooted for him. Finally, I went out to the lobby, and I found Nathan pacing up and down. What's on now? That recording that they returned with the Ponchielli. It's funny, you know. They're crazy about Ponchielli and Mozart. Can't stand Gershwin. Strange. Joe, there's something wrong with the films. What do you mean? Well, something wrong with the whole thing. It's a hunch. I felt that way with the vaccine for the common cold. Turned out to be a bust, huh? Now, there's something about the way they move. Well, that bothers me, too. When I turn the tape faster, they're all rushing, and you begin to wonder why their clothes don't stream behind them, why the doors don't close quickly behind them, why things fall so fast. Well, we don't have to worry about it. We'll see them in about two hours when they land. <laughs> He seemed a little too cheerful. Joe Nathan wasn't like that. He was usually too serious, took things literally. But he seemed to be trying to convince himself that nothing could go wrong. It was as if he smelled a rat but held his nose and went right ahead. At minus 30 minutes, we all took our places in the blockhouse. They had a monitor set up with the automatic translator hooked up on the audio channel, so the alien operator looked as if he was talking English, but the lip movement didn't quite match like a bad foreign film with English dialogue. There he is. He's broadcasting. Throw in the translator unit. We've decelerated enough to enter the atmosphere. We'll be landing in three time periods. Hey, Joe, what is it? A murky-looking planet you live on? What do you mean by that? He's kidding. I've been talking with him for a few weeks. He's, he's got a sense of humor. Well, what does he mean, murky? Can't be raining over much territory on Earth. It rained here this morning, but it's cleared up now. There he is again. See the way he holds his mouth in an O? Uh -huh. That's their laugh. Oh. There, you can see his view screen behind him. He must be just entering the atmosphere. There goes the green light again. What's that? Oh, we're not getting this broadcast direct. That light means they've sent a concentrated squawk broadcast. We record it, slow it down, and then play it back here. Just a minute, and we'll get what he said. Here, here it comes. Hey, Joe, it's dark. Your atmosphere is thick, really thick. You didn't tell me that. Approaching ground level. I didn't hear any rocket jets. We, we should hear a landing blast, shouldn't we? I don't know, I don't know. Another message in. We've landed, we're down. Well, they can't be. They can't be, there's nothing out there. Here he is again. Listen, Joe, we're down. We're, we're landed, but our detection field shows no buildings near. Nothing. The atmosphere registers thick as glue. There's tremendous gas pressure. Our hull won't take it too long. There's no light at all. Joe, you didn't describe it like this. What kind of a trick is this? We've got a directional fix on the broadcast now. Well, where is it? There, on the field. We're trying repair. We're adjusting a view screen to pick up the long waves to go through this, Merck. The engineer says there's something wrong with the steam jets. We're sending a help call to our nearest space base. Joe, get us out of here. Well, where are they? Where are they? There's nothing out there. Nothing. They'll have to triangulate the next broadcast again. Joe, you've got to send a rescue party somehow. Listen, we've got a viewing screen rigged now. We're in the middle of a half circle of cliffs. Around the horizon, there is a wide, muddy lake with swimming, pulpy things attacking and eating each other on all sides. We're almost in the lake on the soft edge. And the mud can't hold the ship's weight, and we're sinking. The tubes are mud-clocked. When can you reach us? 
They're out there, aren't they? They're out there on that airport, on the empty field. Where are you? We're sinking. Where are you? I was wrong. The squawk transmission, by speeding it up for better efficiency, I was wrong. What do you mean? They don't speed up their broadcasts. They live that fast. Over an hour of talk and action in one squawk? Nothing of any size could move that fast against inertia. Joe, get us out. We're sinking. We're sinking into the mud, into the lake. The hull is buckling. Joe, get us out. You can't, can you? How? Get them out. There isn't a lake or a river within hundreds of miles from here. The direction finders. The broadcast came from out there. From the concrete spaceport. Possibly at the edge of the runway where the grass is growing. After all, it rained this morning. Do you think we could ever find them? Maybe. With a strong enough magnifying glass... You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Rattle OK by Harry Warner, Jr., which demonstrates that a time machine could be very useful for handling a department store's complaints, provided you don't go too far to please a customer. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Pictures Don't Lie, A story from the pages of Galaxy written by Catherine McLean and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Joe DeSantis as Schwartz, John Gibson as Nathan, Sam Gray as a newsman, and Dick Hamilton as the alien. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. One of the best, one of the most popular programs...